Be Wealthy and Smart, Episode 90. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about why five-star rated mutual funds are not all they're cracked up to be the dirty little secret Wall Street doesn't want you to know, and what mutual funds will actually perform best. Sometimes I have to fly in the face of common practice and point out things that are just not right in the investing world. This is one of those shows. It's time someone stepped forward and told you the truth. One of the dirty little secrets on Wall Street is that Morningstar is a great sales tool to sell you mutual funds and is not a predictor of top performing funds. Looking in the rearview mirror at past performance, a portfolio of five-star rated funds can look really impressive. The only problem is no one owned the portfolio you are being shown. It was created the day you came into the office to show the absolute best past performance. It was not a portfolio that your financial advisor has been offering to anyone and none of his or her clients owned that portfolio and got that performance. It is purely a sales tool to show you perfect past performance, so you buy their suggested mutual fund portfolio. It has nothing to do with future performance, and I suspect often will have subpar returns because it may even be the peak of a cycle, and it can be all downhill from there. For example, Bond mutual fund performance looks fantastic for the past 10 and even 30 years, but that's due to interest rates declining and peaking in 1981, declining after 9-11 and the financial crisis in 2007, and declining interest rates make bond valuations rise. However, since cycles show interest rates are about to move in the other direction for the next 30 years, this could be the absolute worst time to invest in bonds. Morningstar will show you five-star ratings of bond funds that could make you think 30-year bonds are the greatest place to invest. But all that really does is get you to invest in those funds. It's a sales tool. It does nothing to help your performance going forward. According to a study done by Vanguard, in a three-year period, the lowest rated funds actually generated the greatest excess returns, while the highest rated funds generated the least. Did you catch that? Five-star funds performed the worst over the next three years, and one, two, or three-star rated funds performed the best. I rest my case. Vanguard's study also demonstrated an investor had less than a 50-50 shot of picking a fund that would outperform regardless of its rating at the time of the selection. Whoa, so ratings aren't what indicate future performance? It's a 50-50 crapshoot? Wow, your advisor won't tell you that. In 1966, the economist William Sharp, who is the well-respected researcher that the Sharp Ratio is named after, he stated, all other things being equal, the smaller a fund's expense ratio, the better results obtained by its stockholders. That alone should tell you you're better off probably buying a Vanguard portfolio than buying Morningstar five-star rated funds. But there is another element to consider. While it's taboo to talk about future performance in the investment industry, now that we know cycles exist and repeat, we can look forward like billionaires who follow cycles and think differently about how and where to invest. For example, if cycles tell us that bonds move in a 30-year cycle, which they do, then we should know that the top was in 1981 and the bottom was in 2011. While interest rates have slightly started to move up, we may see the Fed start to raise rates going forward. 
Not only will rising interest rates cause losses in the bond fund market, especially in 30-year bonds, those long-term bonds, but it will also wreak havoc with the real estate market, causing home buyers to not be able to afford as large of a monthly payment, and it will cause the national debt to skyrocket. This is the mindset you must have as an investor. If this, then that. It's like a chess game. The biggest indicator is what interest rates are doing. That is the 100-pound gorilla in the room. Understanding cycles is what will help you look forward to determine the best places to invest. That's how billionaires think before they invest. They think about what investments will do the best going forward. What are the trends and cycles? Where will money grow the fastest? But I digress. We were talking about why five-star rated funds are not the best place to invest going forward, and sometimes they are the worst, especially if it's the peak of a bubble. For example, in the year 2000, there was a technology fund that was up almost 100% in one year. Investors clamored into the five-star rated fund, hoping to get that spectacular past performance again in the future. Unfortunately, it was the peak of the internet bubble, and over the next few years, the fund lost 75%. Investing in funds after they have a big performance year can mean it's really the peak of a cycle. Think of the shape of a mountain. It's like the cycle goes up the left side of the mountain to the peak of the mountain, only to reverse and go down the other side of the mountain. That's how cycles work. They can last different lengths of time for different markets. Interest rates run in about a 30-year cycle, real estate in about an 18-year cycle, and the stock market in an 8.6-year cycle. So next time you have a five-star portfolio placed in front of you and the financial advisor is showing you what a great portfolio it is, ask this one question. How many of your clients owned this portfolio? Because chances are the computer just spit out the best possible 10-year track record looking backwards, and the answer will be zero. None of their clients owned that portfolio and received those returns. Not one. Ever. Rather than hypothetical past performance returns, we should be asking for real returns their clients received and go from there. Morningstar five-star past performance makes any financial advisor look like a hero at the moment you are deciding to invest. It takes regular monitoring of the portfolio to make sure it's performing well and making adjustments if it's not. If you're picking your own funds and using Morningstar, I caution you, Don't just pick five-star funds, but think about the cycle, like interest rates, and what might have caused the great performance, and if it can be replicated going forward. Since interest rates can't get any lower from here, there's no chance that long-term bonds can repeat the performance of the last 30 years. In fact, they might just be reversing the cycle and coming down the other side of the mountain. So what can you do? Number one. Pay attention to interest rates as an economic indicator. Their direction and movement is super important. Number two, don't just blindly select five-star funds. Look for funds with low expense ratios. Number three, pay attention to cycles. They repeat and help us see what may be coming ahead. Number four, review your portfolio regularly and make adjustments. Don't set it and forget it. I love receiving questions, so if you have a question about anything I talked about today or any of my other podcasts, please email me at lindaprivate at lindapjones.com. And if you haven't yet subscribed, rated, and reviewed the Be Wealthy and Smart podcast, please go on over and do that. My goal is to get more reviews and more subscriptions so more people can find the show and I can help them be wealthy and smart too. So please leave your review on iTunes or stitcherradio.com if you have an Android device or Roku Smart TV. I really, really would appreciate it. And if you let me know you did it, I'm happy to send you a free report called Secrets of Billionaires. Just send an email that you left a review to lindaprivate at lindapjones.com. If you liked hearing about bubbles and cycles today, I'll be talking more about them on my next webinar. It's called The Five Mistakes That Keep You From Attaining Financial Freedom, and you can sign up at lindapjones.com forward slash five mistakes. 
I'll also put a link on my website under the podcast section, and this was podcast number 90. So you can either go to podcast number 90 on my website and find the link, or you can remember lindapjones.com forward slash five mistakes. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.